Hi, I'm John. I'm Dan. And together we're Pocrates. So we were tagged as part of a challenge by Nick from Kyogre Kawaii, another PokeTuber, um, to sort of give a little idea of who we are, um, to get the community to sort of introduce ourselves to the community, as well as pass that challenge along to three more uh, YouTubers. So the first question was, where did we get our name from? Um, so our name is Pocrates, not Poc rates or uh, pokey rates, but uh, it's from a play on the famous philosopher Socrates. Um, we both love Pokemon so much, and our initial um, idea was to kind of do theories uh, related to the new Pokemon Sword and Shield games. Um, so we wanted to kind of link. You know, this idea of Pokemon with philosophizing. So the first big thing that I did that sort of got me um, more interested in becoming a bigger part of the Pokemon community was I wrote this theory for Poke Jungle when I was applying to be a writer. And the theory was that there are all these Pokemon in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon who got egg moves who are not in Alola. And why did they get these egg moves? And are they going to be Galarian forms in Sword and Shield? And when I did, when we, well, when I wrote that theory, then we were thinking, you know, there are all these people covering Pokemon news. There are all these people coming up with their own theories and people were covering the theory I wrote, <laughs> a drive, um, covered it for example. And so we thought, you know what, we might as well try it. You know, why not make our own channel? So here we are. And the name Pocrates comes from those ideas, those theories. And at the end of the day, what do we really know? nothing so the second question is what's your favorite pokemon game so i would currently have to say pokemon sword and shield i'm not just saying that because it's the newest and the freshest but um prior to that it was uh crystal um the region with 18 18 gyms, 12 gyms no 16 gems 16 gems uh it was really cool the two different regions uh completing all of hoenn oh my god johto and then going back uh to kanto was really cool a nice surprise once you got to the elite four to have that whole other region after um whereas my favorite pokemon game is actually i mean can i say four can i just say gen five my favorite pokemon games were black white and black and white two and I felt like that was when Pokemon really hit a stride with storytelling and got away from this good guy, bad guy, here's eight gyms, and then you're going to catch a legendary structure. You know, that was still in place, but there was a lot of fun double battles with story characters who would heal you, and you got to just go through dungeons being healed by your partner. Um, but really, I like the storytelling and the characters in Gen 5. And I like the separation from the original 150. Um, but going back to why Sword and Shield are my favorite, um, I think that they have, the Pokemon company has done better than ever at creating a community and being able to use the, um, online connection better than ever to foster a sense of community. Um, it's really cool. Um, the raids really bring a new aspect to the game um, where you can show off your Pokemon and it's 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 really cool. Um, also, the character customization is awesome. So I feel like totally unique. Like I'm not just playing as this character. I feel like I'm playing as me or a character that I want. Yeah, um, I agree So with that's that. really cool. Um, so props to Nintendo and I can't wait to see what they do with the expansion pass. I'm, I'm thrilled with the Sword and Shield, so. All right. Question number three is, what is your favorite evil team? Uh, you go first. My favorite evil team. I'm just going to say that my favorite evil team is Team Rocket. And I would do a cop-out answer and say Team Rainbow Rocket, because then I can include all of those characters. But honestly, the only reason I like Team Rocket is because it's just, it's just pure evil there's no 
big backstory about why they're really that evil. They just want power and to take over. And, you know, they're the original evil. And then after them, it started to feel more and more tired, in my opinion. So for me, it's Team Rocket. I would have to say um, probably Team Aqua. Um, I thought that the villains uh, in that series, Magma and, and um, Aqua, they both played... I don't know, I thought it was cool that they were two different teams, first of all, on each game, I think. Um, but also Archie is just really attractive. <laughs> um, it was a really cool... Uh, I don't know, it was a cool team. I liked, the, uh, I liked their outfits. You like the nautical? I like the nautical mess of them and how they want to just flood the world um but maybe it didn't make too much sense but you know you have to destroy it to recreate it yeah so um i don't know i like their vibe so that's my favorite evil team, team. aqua uh, the next question is what can we expect uh from our channel this year um well i think that we were just brainstorming this the other day um, I think that we would probably like to maybe do some competitions online. Um, I think we have some good ideas for that. I think that, um, we still will continue to do some, like, Pokemon theories, maybe in regards to the, some of the expansions that are coming out, talk a little bit more about them. What do you think? Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, right now I'm currently battling, um, uh, in... Well, I'm battling in the Amateur Battle League as the Boston Grambles, um, and that's really fun, and I enjoy that every week, and that'll continue to be posted. But like Dan said, you know, there are a lot of ways to enjoy Pokemon, including, you know, the community, and finding ways to engage other people who, you know, are maybe returning to Pokemon, or people who have been playing Pokemon, but we all mutually enjoy it. And that connection, that same... Um, factor that we all love Pokemon is unifying and what can do we have in common and what is that going to make for you know cool content you know is it fun to think about a mentor who has more experience with competitive battle sort of working with someone who is newer and you know whether or not these people are able to stream or record their videos finding a way to make all people feel like they can be a part of the Poketuber community is sort of an interest or I would say like a reach for us like a dream mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh in addition to that you know I've can't help but think all the time there'll be more new theories like Dan said um just ideas you know one thing that I did briefly for Pokey Jungle was an astrology a zodiac sign assignment you know the the sun sign the moon sign the That's Mercury fun. Mars uh Venus and then Ascendant and those six placements you know, a very different zodiac sign to zodiac sign, and then what Pokemon sort of meet those qualities. And now I've got a whole bunch more to pick from. Yeah. Galarian forms and new Pokemon. Mm -hmm. So it's exciting to think, you know, at the beginning of every month, starting the new zodiac cycle, it'll be fun to put out a video that's, you know, this is what Aries might look like. And then by the end of the year, you could build a team in Galar or, I mean, maybe just Pokemon Home. You could Home. probably even host a tournament using your zodiac team so stay tuned for that um it's something that i've thought a lot about and it's something that i'm very interested in so that you can probably expect starting this year uh let's see the next That's... question is why did we start our channel in the first place um so we sort of alluded to why we started our channel in the first place we you know, I had written my theory and we saw people covering it and people were interested in it. And we sort of said, you know what? We can what? do this. Right. We can do this. I mean, clearly we're still in de development. We're not masterful yet. But, you know, we know what to work on. We know to improve lighting, whatever. So we really started this channel because we had ideas that we wanted to share and we wanted to meet more people with similar interests. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people, um, I would say, in our our real life here that we um maybe don't have a strong of a passion for pokemon um but through watching people's streams and 
um, the environment on Twitter and just all of our supporters since we've started. Um, there really is such a, I think we fostered a nice group of people um, who we really enjoyed to just chat with, you know, um, and I can't wait to foster those some more. I mean, and beyond just like the people who like we connect with on the internet, you know, we've actually met and become friends with people who we met through Pocrates. You know, we met our friends JT and Paul, who are actually right up the street from us, another couple who plays Pokemon. And, you know, we're going to do a tournament with them. And that all started thanks to Pocrates. So, mm -hmm. you know, you may feel like, oh, I'm watching videos on the internet, but I'm the only one of three people I know who plays. But that's not really true. And once you open up that possibility and you start thinking about who could I meet, you know, there are people out there and there are people who want to play the same type of ways you want to play. It's true. So the last part of this video is where we pass the challenge along and we choose people, you know, based on who we think you would want to hear more about, who you'd be interested in watching. Um, so for these three, we talked about it um, kind of at length, you know, a lot of people had already been tagged and we didn't really want to re-tag people, you know, like make them do another video. Probably not going to happen. No. <laughs> so the people who we tagged are people who have either been super supportive of us since we entered the community or people who we have really great relationships with or both um, and who we continue to hope to work with or work alongside. So, so our uh, first tag would be Tay Chi Chu. Well, she already got tagged. Oh, she got tagged. Already got tagged. So we were going to do Tay Chi Chu. <laughs> um, we love Tay Chi Chu because she's been instrumental in us feeling like a part of this community, and she's been really helpful um, and generous and fun. And she keeps it fun, and she brings this element of optimism that is so welcome in what has turned out to be so ugly since the national decks announcement anyways so the actual first person who we're going to to tag is um the andy gamer or that's not even his name the drew gamer mm -hmm. andy from the drew gamer so andy has a lot of content and he's really consistent and he's really nice and he's a really genuine guy and you know, you get a cool variety from him. Mm -hmm. Agreed. He has Final Fantasy Friday. He has Pokemon Monday. And in that way, he has a structure that you really can anticipate and predict what kind of co content you're going to watch. And it's fun. So we are going to tag the Snagum Wes. Um, Wes is another competitor in the ABL. And I had a great battle against him last week. Uh, he used a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh! Nick. Well, he used entirely a party of Yu-Gi-Oh! nicknames, that. which was so fun to battle against. Um, and I love the cohesion. Oh. Yeah, Kaiba. Kaiba beware. Yeah, watch out for her. She's thick. So Wes, check out his channel. He's also in the ABL, so you can predict more content and battles from him in the future. And um, great nicknames. Um, and the last tag, we are going to tag Turtwig Talks. Hopefully you have not done this video yet. Um, but you're fun. I always enjoy watching your, your content. You have a lot of energy and spunk. Um, and you're just, you're, you're fun to follow and watch. So Your opinions are fresh on Twitter. And it's good content. Keep it up. So check these people out. Um, their links will be in the description below. And expect those things from us in the future. Bye, guys.